Uh, good morning or good afternoon parents and students for that matter. Uh, this is just a recorded video of the Parent Night presentation, Study Skills and Organisation um, for 2021. Uh, so um, the purpose of this presentation, I suppose, is to explain a little bit about what we do at St Mark's and how to, um, or how we aim to allow your student to be ready for their life in the 21st century, um, because times have changed. And um, there's a, you can see on the screen, the, the cover of Time magazine talks about how the skills needed for success um, in the future um, create a, a new reality. So sometimes we, you know, the, the, the educational people and um, those into the future of work and trends will, will, and I'm sure as an adult you know this yourself, but we, do, we seem to be dividing up these skills into hard and soft skills. And as the iceberg metaphor uses, you can see that soft skills more often than not are under the surface definitely and often bigger and arguably more important than um, at, on occasion than the hard skills are. So when we're talking about hard skills, these are the specific skills or the, if you like the content that you will learn in particular courses. They are, you know, the formal qualifications, um, the actual skills of using ICT, proficiency in English, um, accounting, you know, um, the, 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 the knowledge of science or um, engineering or, you know, the things that you actually need to do um, and the nuts and bolts of your job, I suppose. We're talking about soft skills um, or interdisciplinary skills, as they're sometimes called. Um, they will transfer easily across many occupations. And I guess the foundation for this, as we've seen in a minute, is um, that pe young people today and will do anywhere between, well, at least seven occupations um, over their working career. And we're not talking about just moving from Maccas to KFC, we're talking about really changing um, occupations, core occupations. So, for example, um, from teaching into uh, something else like graphic design. Um, and so, therefore, to enable these changes to keep up with the changing nature of work, soft skills are becoming a lot more important. Um, as is shown by SEEK, arguably the world's, um, or certainly Australia's most um, frequented job website, SEEK would argue that the most in-demand skills that employers are looking for um, include adaptability, as we talked about, because it, your, your job descriptions are continually changing, Analytical, analytical thinking, the ability to solve problems for yourself, being proactive, which kind of links with problem solving because you, you have to fix it yourself, the ability to empathise with others um, in terms of the people you are working with and for, um, and also resilience. So when, uh, if it doesn't succeed, you don't give up, you continue to try. Um, last year, I was fortunate enough to go for a uh, professional learning event at the University of Western Australia. And one of the, um, as you can, Glennis Jones was her name. She um, is an associate at the library. And she had um, basically put together a presentation on the most common things which are deficient in first year university students when they arrive at the university. And she says, these are the things or the skills which would actually most benefit students in getting a head start when they get to uni after year 12. Uh, reading and note taking skills, the ability to write, um, which does still for, for at times, whilst there is still a three hour written exam for most courses, it does still include handwriting. The ability to present um, in a fluent and um, communicative way oral presentations, working together and um, the ability to understand how to break down exams. Uh, she also talked about if you like, softer skills of time management, organisation, um, communication with both lecturers, teachers and peers, and that motivation to just get on and do it independently without continually having to ask for help. So I'll just say that's what um, the University of Western Australia Library um, Lady Glenis um, sort of observed over many years the, the, the changing deficiencies from year 12 kids coming in to school. So I guess, you know, as teachers at St Mark's, there's, there's a lot going on in this space um, and it does link in with our strategic plan, which uh, was released by Mr Davies earlier this year. 
Um, and we want to develop students with rounded character. Um, and some of it doesn't necessarily fit wholly with study skills, but things like developing resilience, adaptability, empathy and integrity. You can see some of these key words um, are beginning to flow through lots of different aspects of school because they're the types of people we want to develop for success in the future. Um, and lifelong learning really has been around for a while, but um, we all understand that because of the changing nature of work, if we don't continually improve, we will fall behind and not be equipped for the future. Um, another thing this year is um, Dr. Nedelicki uh, with some other teachers um, and, and leaders in the school has developed um, some new attributes which we are hoping will also help meet the needs of students in transitioning them to a successful life. Um, in particular, without reading through it, um, these will be on the reports, um, the semester one and semester two report. So your child will be asked to, or teachers will be asked to reflect on this um, in terms of your children in their classes. So attitude and effort. Um, and I'll let you read it as the slide is sort of going through. Um, importantly, I, I think for study skills, reflection and growth. So if you don't reflect on um, what you've done wrong, then you can never get better. And I guess that's the core thing. Um, and collaboration and communication. So again, it does lead into those soft skills um, which are going to be needed for the future. When we're talking specifically about study skills, um, this is, I've spoken about this before, but um, I found this as a really good way to break it down um, nicely and easily, and it's something the kids can relate to. So when we're talking about revision and preparing for academic assessments, we like to, first of all, refine what it is we need to do, then we need to obviously refine it, and then we uh, revise it, sorry, and then we need to review it. I'm just going to go through each one in a bit of detail. So refining it comes down to your understanding or your student's understanding of the course. Um, and at St Mark's there's probably two places where that's most apparent. Firstly, it's in sector, in course outlines, which generally appear on the cover page of the sector um, course that your children are learning about, um, as do the assessments and when the assessments are due. Um, so that's a big part of refining it and knowing the course is knowing when you're actually going to be assessed. For Year 11-12 specifically, the um, SCARSA, as the education people call it, but the School Curriculum and Standards Authority um, has a range of syllabus documents, support materials, etc., etc., um, ATAR, trackers, you name it, it's all there in the SCARSA website. When we're talking about refining it, um, we're also talking about setting goals and getting the motivation to achieve them. And at St Mark's, um, over the years, um, students increasingly are using sector um, as a goal setting portal. And the reason we're choosing to use it is because you at home as parents can actually see the same thing through the sector engage portal. So as you can see, um, it's in the student tab on the left hand side, you'll see there's a goals button, you click into it and it allows you um, allows the students to set a range of goals and it just keeps them there so you can grow on them year on year. Um, and it's broken down into the following categories. So I've just made this up as an example. So for example, the goal might be to achieve a certain percentage in English, um, then the action, um, attend revision classes. Um, so I guess this is based on the SMART goal um, system, which you probably are familiar with. Um, and it's basically quantifying the, the key thing for kids that we found is the kids are actually really good at setting goals, but they really struggle with actually actioning those goals and measuring how well they're going against them. So I guess those are the areas where you could help at home um, in, in making sure the kids, may, you know, providing ideas to help them achieve them and also keeping them on track. Another um, thing which increasingly is useful, I think, for many families is some sort of organisational chart. Um, doesn't have to look like this, but um, increasingly we understand at St Mark's that kids are very busy people with school commitments, with uh, work as you get older, with sport, dance, drama, whatever it might be outside of school hours. The organised, uh, the better organised you are, the better your success will be. And it really comes down to finding time in your very busy weeks when you can study, be it before school, be it after school. Um, the successful kids don't just leave it to ad hoc and I'll do it when I do it. They've actually got time set aside for revision um, to enable them to achieve academic success. 
Um, so the next part in our study skills is after we've planned it out and we've set ourselves some goals and we've got a plan to achieve those goals and we've organised our, our week, then we actually need to start continually revising the course that we um, are actually doing. And, uh, you know, this is the, the, the nuts and bolts for teachers and for students. They're, they're increasingly becoming pretty good with a range of revision strategies. Um, and there's a few there on the screen. I'm not going to go through each one, but they're obviously sometimes subject dependent on which subject your kids are doing. Some are going to be better for some. So, for example, um, for, for a subject like business, which I teach, flashcards are great. Um, for a science based subject, perhaps dual coding would be better because it provides text and images. And when you're understanding human anatomy, you need a picture to go with it. Um, mind maps are really great for all subjects simply because the, the, they actually replicate the way that the, the, your brain structures information in branches and trees. Just down the bottom, you can, might be able to see it. The worst revision strategy is simply recopying and highlighting what it is that you've done in class. Okay, it, it's a low order. It's not actually helping you learn anything because you're not testing what you know and what you don't. And for kids at home, it is a really common strategy because it makes them look busy and gets parents off their back. I'll just leave that one out there. Uh, you can make it visual and increasingly there's lots of IT resources which will enable you to do that. There's a couple on the screen. So after we've done lots of revision, then clearly the next thing we need to do before assessments is review it. Um, Self-testing is a great method using your flashcards. There's lots of quizzes available. Increasingly, teachers will probably make available practice tests for all years as a method of formative assessment. Um, and as the students get older into year 11 and 12, um, coming up to exams, the best method of revision is to complete past papers and mark them against the marking keys, which are all freely available from the SCARSA website. In fact, most courses also produce a, a good answers guide or a best practice guide um, based on previous exams, which are often very beneficial um, in showing students what a good answer looks like. Um, there are some useful websites which I know around the school um, people are using for review. So Education Perfect, I think, is used in science and also languages. Um, there's a couple of other sites there listed on the screen. Um, and uh, the, the bottom one down here is increasingly teachers are using YouTube um, to record their lessons. And so then kids can go back to the content that they're not a bit, a bit unsure of and actually re-watch the teacher teaching. Um, so, yeah, there's a few YouTube channels around there. Um, aside from that, the school provides a range of other opportunities for students to improve and to continually review, including the Tony Stouffer Library, which um, the opening dates are there. Um, in terms of private study, it is now supervised in the library, and so it is a really active time for students to use that time effectively. And um, pretty much a lot of the main faculty areas um, allow students to come in for um, what we call help sessions. Um, for Haas and Science, there were too many to list um, in this video, so I've just given the link from um, the, the Lions Raw newsletter, which kind of listed out, but it's basically every other day, either morning or afternoon, and you can see English and maths are at the times on the screen. The research would show actually that kids working together and developing a study group and learning from each other and teaching the content of the course or showing their understanding through explanation is sometimes true mastery of the, the concepts that they're trying to learn. So developing study in groups using the facilities available in our learning spaces around the school um, is a great way for kids to engage with each other and learn at the same time. If you have any questions about this presentation, please um, give us a uh, drop me a line at the email address on the screen. I hope that helps and thank you.